Hello folks and welcome to English 306, the rhetoric of popular culture. Uh, probably my favorite course uh, to teach. I, I really love this stuff. I hope that uh, you'll enjoy it too. There's a lot of um, pretty heavy duty uh, academic work to do in the course, but it's also just a lot of fun. Uh, and it, it, it's really useful information too. I think it's, uh, it, there's, there's life lessons in this course uh, things that you'll be using uh, from here on out so it, it's just a, i'm really glad <laughs> to get to teach this and uh that you're here to uh learn with me all about uh so today's objectives we'll keep this uh, first lecture of course uh, as brief as possible I, you know i tend to get excited and go on but i'll try to you know limit that uh, as much as possible not making any promises though uh, but we'll talk briefly about the main themes of the course I have a little video, a little story uh, to start us off. And of course, who am I? You know what? Who am I to be teaching this to you? We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, some of the logistical stuff on D2L Brightspace. Now, I assume that you have at least logged into D2L before, so I'll skip all that. But there's a few little things you might want to see, uh, like where the syllabus is, and maybe get a, a heads up on how to follow the calendar. Uh, the course things like the text required for the course. And then we'll get into these major projects. Uh, so first, before we really delve into uh, what pop culture means or anything of that sort, I thought we could watch this little, I think about a 10-minute video, about something called the Steam Tunnel Incident. So I'm not going to tell you much more about it other than it has something to do with Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> Uh, just watch the, you know, watch the video, and as you're watching it, I want you to be thinking about these three questions. So, why was the game vilified by so many? What was it about this game that <clears throat> made people so concerned? And then from that, what can we learn about society and culture from the story of James Dallas Eg Egbert III? So, take about ten minutes, uh, watch the video, come back, and answer these questions, and then we'll uh, move on. All right, so here's some other startling facts about popular culture. <laughs> it's sort of mind-blowing stuff. So this one always gets me. More people voted for American Idol than they did the, in the U.S. presidential election. Of course, that was back in 2012. <laughs> uh, you know, that, that's just kind of amazing to me. You know, of course, they can. It's a little bit easier, I suppose, to vote on American Idol, especially back in in 2012. Which is just something to think about. You know, this is uh, you know, people cared enough to uh, to vote on that. And if you remember when American Idol was in its in its heyday, it's like everybody was talking about this. It was a cultural phenomenon, uh, and it got a lot of people engaged. Uh, two is just some economical numbers for some financial uh, numbers for you. So movies and games made $12.9 billion and $12.97 billion. So I guess video games are a little bit more lucrative, respectively, in 2013. Uh, those are huge numbers. You know, it's just obviously there is a lot of money uh, tied into uh, movies and games. Now, something kind of interesting I learned uh, just the other day, I wasn't really aware of this, but, you know, I don't know when you'll be watching this, uh, but right now there's all this discussion about Hollywood making these big budget films like Wonder Woman in uh, 1984 uh, and a bunch of other ones. And there's, there's a new Bill and Ted movie I watched uh, <laughs> a few months ago. Uh, but anyway, they're releasing these on uh, Netflix and Amazon Prime, basically streaming them, and they're not even in the theaters at all maybe or if they're in the theaters at the same time they're being streamed and you know i kind of assume that you know big deals you know you got to pay uh to watch it on the stream so surely they're making uh similar money but apparently that's wrong you know apparently they they make most of their money in the theaters in the traditional movie houses uh during like that first couple of weeks of a of an opening is when they make most of their money so I didn't know that, but the streaming apparently is just making very little money. 
uh, compared to the traditional, you know, theatrical releases. So I, I'm, I'm <laughs> just putting that out there. It's just kind of something interesting as as a facet of pop culture. I wonder what kind of impact uh, that will have, depending on if you know the theaters come back eventually, and you know, people are people going to just keep watching the streaming? <laughs> you know, or are they going to go back to theaters? And that's going to that might end up having a bigger uh, impact on our society than we uh, are aware of at this point. Something to keep an, an eye on. Well, let's see. The average U.S. adult spends nearly three hours on a smartphone, which is, uh, I didn't write down the number here, but apparently way more than they do watching TV. So imagine three hours. <laughs> uh, wow, that's just a lot of time, you know, to be staring at uh, a little uh, a little screen. You know, I can't imagine what my uh, kid self would have thought about this trend in our society. Uh, here's another fun, fun, fun little factoid, I guess. So Mickey Mouse is still apparently the most popular character in the world. And I, I looked uh, an article here that talks about this. You know, why is Mickey Mouse still so popular? And this is this is gonna blow your mind. I don't know if you're aware of this. Yeah, this little bit here. So you can't look away from the mouse. So check this out. So it's no accident that adults like Mickey Mouse... It's no accident that adults like Mickey Mouse. Walt Disney made sure that it was nearly impossible not to. And then you talk about how they... Um, created the, the drawing, or how they drew Mickey and the chain kept changing up the look, uh, tweaking the character to make him more and more universally appealing. This is talking about, I guess, the Walt Disney uh, himself, uh, you know, the original uh, creator. He made Mickey's face and body rounder and more childlike. Mickey's eyes became larger and rounder like those of a baby. Uh, this is something that the Harvard evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould observed and described as neoteny, which refers to the retention of juvenile features in adult animals. So they they're actually have had scientists like researching the way that Mickey looks and seeing that there's like subliminal <laughs> uh, stuff going on. You know, once they get, you know, aware of this, they're able to, uh, you know, leverage it even more. So that, that's just something that blows my mind <laughs> completely. You know, I just thought it was a fun little cartoon character, you know, and, and then to read about like all of the science and an intention behind that, it's just, just fascinating. It really makes you, um, you know, start thinking about uh, other cartoons and <laughs> is, it, is it really just a harmless cartoon or is it, you know, is there something like almost instinctual going on i can't <laughs> i can't look away from the you know the mickey mouse <laughs> maybe there's something about these uh phones right that's having the same kind of a uh, uh, unknowing impact all right some of the main themes of this course so this is the the big one for me is this this first item here it's the uh, uh these works of pop culture oops let's see do i have a marker here maybe i just have a pointer okay <laughs> Uh, anyway, it's, it's that they're exerting some kind of influence on our beliefs, our attitudes, our behaviors, whether we realize it or not. So a lot of people say, that's just a harmless film. Or I like this style of music. It, I don't even listen to the lyrics. Or, you know, I just like the song, right? I just like the beat. I don't care about any of the rest of it. It's certainly not having any impact on the way I uh, see the world at all. It's just entertainment. It's just amusement. Uh, but the point of this course is, is to argue, well, actually, it does. <laughs> that doesn't. It's not like uh, mind control. It's not like uh, hypnosis, uh, anything of that sort. But it does. It's, it's sort of like um, arguing with somebody, you know, about how you should believe or what should you believe about things. What's what's the correct behavior? What's the correct attitude? And we'll get into seeing how, like, even a television show, it's not just commercials. You know, it's pretty obvious that a, uh, a TV commercial is trying to get you to go out and buy the product or, you know, try that new uh, uh, 
you know, go to Popeye's, right, and try the chicken. You know, I wish I could. <laughs> Line's too long. I can't do that. Uh, so it's obvious with the commercial. But the argument here is even a movie. Uh, you know, even Wonder Woman 1984, whatever the case may be, is trying to make some kind of argument about the correct way or how you should believe about something, what's the correct attitude uh, about it. So we'll get into that. And then conversely, how, do, how can we learn about our culture and society by looking at these movies? You know, we're going to be watching a lot of uh, uh, The Walking Dead and, and zombies and talking about zombie movies in this course. And part of the reason for that is that there's been zombie movies basically since the 40s and the 50s and through the 60s all the way up uh, to modern times, but they're... They're different in the way that they portray the zombie. Like, how do you become a zombie? What is it about zombies that are portrayed as, as scary? Uh, and you can actually sort of learn about what it was like. What was the attitudes of society in the in the 60s, let's say, or earlier, uh, compared to now? You can sort of, it's in a weird way, learn about a culture or society by just looking at like the type of movies that are popular during that era. And you can learn a lot more than you might think. And it's not just, well, that song happened to be popular in uh, that year. Uh, but maybe if you dig a little deeper, you can learn some things about other developments that were taking place at, at the time. And then finally, studying rhetoric uh, can help you become, well, for, yeah, learn how it happens. How do these things become influential? Uh, how can you become more aware of it so you're not just kind of this passive uh, consumer of this stuff, but you can say, hey, I see... They're trying to be, uh, maybe they're not trying to, but it's a little bit manipulative, you know, this, you know, the way they're portraying this. You know, I don't know if I, I don't know if I like uh, the way they're portraying that. It's, uh, <laughs> maybe I want to be a little more critical <laughs> uh, of it, because you will definitely see uh, many, many times where, you know, the director, the producers, whatever, uh, they, they, want to they want to portray a certain things with a certain spin, right, a certain view Sometimes it's even. They're, sometimes they're not even aware of it themselves, you know, which is where it really gets kind of weird. <laughs> they might be inculcating a certain view uh, or making a certain argument, as it were, not even be aware of it. Just think, I'm an artist. I'm just doing my thing over here with the art, and yet when we analyze it, that stuff starts to uh, to come out. Maybe the a lot of times the, the creator will say, I did. I specifically wanted to do the opposite. <laughs> I disagree with that. Uh, but it doesn't really matter, right, if that's the impact that it's having, you know, on the people consuming. <clears throat> All right, a little bit about, uh, about me then. I think I've already said my name is uh, Dr. Matt Barton. I've been a professor here since 2005. I've uh, written several books at this point, very proud to say, uh, most about, mostly about video games. It's my passion done books called Dungeons and Desktops. That's about the history of computer role-playing games. And then uh, some books just about video games in general and some of the systems, like the Nintendo, the Sega, if you remember that, all the way back to the Atari. Of course, Interview. This one's a book of interviews with professional game designers. And I've also done a, a feature film uh, that you can actually watch on Amazon, uh, Gameplay. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel uh, called Matt Chat, where I, I mostly interview um, video game professionals, although I have done uh, Let's Play uh, style videos and just, just fun stuff. But you know, I've been doing that, I guess, for about a decade now, and I've accumulated over 3 million views on that. Uh, so I am fairly familiar with this uh, world of YouTube and the, uh, you know, the video revolution or whatever you want, you want to call it. So... Uh, I love studying media and how, you know, just thinking about things like how is YouTube changing uh, what it means to be a journalist, uh, for example. It's, it's, that's the thing, sort of thing that's fascinating to me. Uh, and then I published in several journals and uh, edited collections, scholarly books basically. A lot of stuff about computers and writing or composition, uh, technical communication, then a lot of work on wikis, Wikipedia. If you know that one, <laughs> I'm sure you do. Uh, as well as the academic study of, of games. So this is all stuff that I've 
you know, I'm not just teaching it, you know, I'm also researching it and doing it myself. All right, so let's flip over, take a quick tour of the uh, D2L page. And again, I'm, I'm not going to bore you with this because I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the basics of D2L, but what I want to show you mainly is like how can you tell when assignments are coming up. So the way I do it is to look at the calendar. And I have laid out here the various readings uh, for the semester. And some of this might change. I've been tweaking this a little bit. You know, I usually forget that there's a holiday somewhere and I have to work around it. But uh, the idea is that you'll have a reading and that you'll write a little nugget. I'll get to that in a minute. And then there'll be a little video like this one uh, after it uh, that where we go over the material. And there might not be one for everything. Like there probably won't be a, a video about the... Uh, Walking Dead episodes. Uh, I'll probably just use those as, ex as examples when we talk about Sal now and uh, Bishop and uh, McLeod. Uh, but that's the plan. So you could see the first reading there would be so sometime before midnight on January 11th in this case. Uh, you could you could blow this uh, up if you like more. But read this nugget. I read this little article, and then you're going to be uh, doing what's called a nugget. So let's just go into that quickly here. So the nugget is, you could think about it kind of as a really small essay. You know, it's basically like two or three sentences, you know, about something in that reading that you want to talk more about or you want to know more about that you think is worthy of discussion. So that's the main thing is just to find something like that in that reading. Uh, but then uh, <clears throat> either write it out or refer to it. The main thing I want you, I don't want you to talk about the article as a whole. I'll just say something really general about the concept. Uh, what I really want you to do is dig into it, find one little detail from it. So maybe the way something is defined or a particular quote or a statistic, you know, just something about it that you could point to and say, let's look at, you know, paragraph two or page 23 or whatever the case may be. Uh, if there's no page numbers, you can just kind of describe, uh, you know, where it is in the book. And just what, what is it that you want to talk about or what, what is it that struck you? What's valuable about it? Uh, maybe you disagree with it. You know, that's always fun. Uh, but just kind of elaborate a little bit on, you know, what, what it is about that part of the book or part of the reading that you want to talk about. That's a step two. So you post that on the forum. And then the third step is to look at some of the other classmates. <coughs> so depending on when you post this, uh, you might have to wait a while, but eventually there'll be some other nuggets up there. So read a couple of those and then, again, write a quick response, not looking for <laughs> essays here. Just a couple of sentences. Try to say something a little more than I like it or I agree. You know, see if you can help them dig into that topic a little bit more. Uh, maybe give some examples other examples you could think of, some other way it could be applied. Maybe ask them a follow-up question. You know, it's, it's just trying to get some discussion going, you know, around these topics. So you're not just reading it and forgetting about it, but you're reading it and then uh, talking about it. Because it's really when you start discussing these things, that's when it starts to come clear. That's when you start to get, you know, having those aha moments. Okay, now I get this. <laughs> oh, you know, I see what, I, I didn't get that until I saw you write about it now it suddenly starts to click you know that that's the goal here and this is just the uh, discussion board so again I don't really feel the need to step you all the way through this process if, if, you, if you need help with D2L you can go to the Husky help desk uh, <clears throat> I'll see if I can put that number in the syllabus for you but uh, you could call him and say I'm having a little trouble you know uh, figuring out how to post something to the forum you know they'd be happy to uh, you know, talk you through that process, but, but hopefully, you know, it'll be uh, fairly easy for you. Uh, you know, let's just have one last thing before we, we go here. I want to show you the syllabus. Oh, so I, I did that kind of quick. Let me uh, step you through. So I clicked on materials and then content. And then I think it looks like this. So I've got the instructions for assignments here. So, for example, like, oh, I want to read, I want, I want to see how he does those nuggets. You know, you could come, uh, instructions for assignments, click on the nugget instructions and see that. 
Or, you know, you might want to see what's what's coming up if you want to get more, you know, a better picture of these uh, larger assignments. You can certainly do those here. Uh, and let's see what else is here. Syllabus. Okay, so I'll leave most of this for you to enjoy on your own. Uh, I just wanted to come down here and look at the a couple of sections from it. Well, let's see. I do have a bit of a disclaimer going here. So, as you'll see, you know, a lot of my when you teach a course like this, you, I find it helpful to have a theme. So everybody's not we're not just reading random stuff, but we, uh, you know, sort of have a similar uh, set of materials to work with that everybody's reading. So we kind of have that. Uh, common thread uh, where we can talk about all these different rhetorical theories and you know keep referring back to the same uh, subject matter. I, I find that very helpful. Uh, but really, the, to be honest with you, I just really enjoy uh, the Walking Dead show. You know, I'm a huge fan <laughs> of the comics and the television show. I even read the novels for it. I even played the games for it. Uh, so I find it really uh, fun, and hopefully you you like it as well. You know, this guy's not perfect. But you know, that, that kind of makes it fun, too. But, you know, I should say, if you really don't want to do it, if you just really hate uh, zombies in The Walking Dead, uh, you know, I would my advice would just be take the course again, maybe next semester. You know, sometimes it's offered by communication studies. And sometimes my friend Mike teaches it, Dr. Damdo, and he doesn't do The Walking Dead. So that would be, you know, uh, you had to wait a while, but... You know, you, you wouldn't have to suffer through it <laughs> if you really hate zombies. I, I mean, I don't want you to have to suffer in this class. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be rewarding and enjoyable as well as engaging. Uh, so with that said, if you're okay with Walking Dead or you hopefully like it, <laughs> you know, a lot of people say they, they haven't watched it before or they uh, aren't sure if they like it. Maybe they've seen like an episode here and there. Uh, you know, just give it a try, uh, especially if you start from the beginning. I find it's a lot more interesting than just starting in the middle somewhere. I, I really think the first season is, is my favorite season, even though there's something to be said for some of the uh, later seasons. But anyway, again, here I go, going on too long. <laughs> uh, okay, so here's what you'll need. Uh, some of these are books and some of these are videos. So one of the big ones is being able to watch The Walking Dead show. Now, easiest way to do this is just to watch it on something like Netflix. Sometimes it's not on Netflix. I don't know what the case may be at the moment. Uh, sometimes it's on Amazon Prime. But generally, you don't need to get the whole series. Just the first season is all we're going to be looking at in this class. Uh, you can also get a DVD. You know, this is like a couple of bucks probably at this point. <laughs> uh, you could just order those and, and watch them. Watch them that way. Doesn't really matter to me what format you watch it in. Uh, as long as you're able to uh, view it somehow. Uh, there's also a comic uh, called The Walking Dead Volume 1 Compendium. It's a big sort of brick. It's got, I think, the first eight volumes of the graphic novels in there. And we won't be reading the whole thing, but it's just cheaper to buy the compendium than it would be to try to buy the separate volumes. Uh, but again, if there's, I don't really care if you have the e version, the comicsology version, if you want the hardback, the paperback, wh whatever is fine, whatever you prefer, as long as you're able to uh, look at it. Uh, and then we have a book called Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics: The Invisible Art. Again, I believe that's available in a couple of different formats. I just picked it up on uh, on Kindle, uh, so you might want to look at that if you want the e version. You know, I find these days I prefer the e-version just so I don't have to carry around a bunch of books. But, you know, whatever works for you is fine. Uh, so now this is the most important book really for the course because this is the one that has all the rhetorical theory in it. So you definitely want to pick up a copy of that. I'm, it says second edition there, but really you should get the uh, latest edition that you can. I'm pretty sure they got the third edition in the bookstore uh, it's not that big a deal. There's not that much difference between the editions. I think the, I think it's maybe a third edition. It's better, in my opinion. It's a little clearer, more examples. So get that one if you can. But again, for all intents and purposes, if you got the second edition, you're probably okay. Uh, and then the, at the very end of the course, we'll look at the Walking Dead video game. And 
Again, all you need is you can get the free uh, trial if you like. We're just playing the first uh, segment of it. I think it's sometimes it's free. Some some people, uh, depending on when you're watching this, you might be able to pick this up for free on Steam or at least very very cheap. Uh, but you could even get this on your phone and play it as well. So you don't need a, you don't need a high end PC or a game console uh, if you don't have one. And, and then the last book here is called American Zombie Gothic. And this is a the, sort of the example that we'll be referring to because basically what that book is, it's a, it's a, it's a study of zombie and, uh, zombies in film from a pop culture perspective. So you really get to see like a book length popular cultural study. Uh, and you'll be familiar with what they're talking about in there. And then you can use that to help guide you when it's time for you to... Uh, do your own analysis. And so let's just skip down here and then we'll wrap this up. So here are the written projects for the class. And again, of course, we'll talk a lot more about these over the course of the semester, but the, the big projects are rhetorical analysis essays. So you'll pick something, uh, some aspect of, uh, some artifact is the word we like to use, uh, of pop culture. So it could be a television show like The Walking Dead or it could be a video game you like. Uh, it could be a novel, a song. Uh, some people have covered uh, albums, uh, music albums. Uh, as long as it's pop culture, so we'll get more into what that means uh, next time. But, you know, it can't be like Mozart or Shakespeare. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, you know, Hamilton or, uh, you, know, any, you know, any modern uh, uh, pop star would be fine. Rap, hip-hop. Uh, of course, uh, movies, basically anything intended uh, for a popular audience would be fun. So you'll pick that, and then you will pick a rhetorical perspective. And that's what we'll spend uh, a lot of the class talking about what that means. But you'll have, say, uh, Aristotle, or you might want to go from a media, like Marshall McLuhan uh, type of perspective, or you might be interested in a feminist uh, take on it. There'll be a lot of them that you can choose from. Uh, so you'll take the artifact, you'll apply that perspective, and then you will evaluate it and talk about you know, what are the values that they're trying to get across in this artifact. Is it, is it good? Is it bad? Do you agree with it? You know, that, that's the gist of it. And then the other component of the, of the class is uh, the nuggets from the readings, which I've already talked about. So again, you won't just read something, but you'll read, and then you'll write a little something about it. You'll discuss it on the forum, and that's 15% uh, of the grade right there. And then the rest of this, I'll probably do away with this uh, final exam since it's, since, since it's an online class. I don't know how useful that would be. So I'll probably cut that out. I actually thought I had already cut that out. So there's a couple items here that will uh, I need to uh, adjust. But the, uh, the idea basically is that we'll read things. We'll talk about them on the forums. You'll watch lectures like this. You'll answer some questions in the lectures. And then you'll do those essays, and the essays will have a rough draft and a peer review and then a, and then a final draft. So I'm probably going to lose some of these. Let's just go ahead and say they won't be the pop quizzes and the final exam. And the <laughs> these last three will go away, and what we'll do is where those uh, percentages are, we'll make that these uh, Edpuzzle activities. Okay. And obviously, some of this will be different since it's a, an online class being adapted from a... Uh, face-to-face -face class, so I have some more work to do on the syllabus, but <laughs> nothing that will impact what, what I've said here. Uh, so anyway, I was just trying to give you a quick over, uh, overview of the class. You know, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you have questions, comments, uh, whatever it is, you know, happy to uh, read those, and, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. But overall, I'm just really happy to be here. Hopefully you are too. Uh, so I will stop it here, and again, just let me know if I can do anything for you, and see you next time.